here at Upstate Orlando with Brian Gilliam from Message Point Media. Brian is one of our longtime partners and I'd say one of the most innovative ones and he's got a lot of new stuff to show us. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so we're you know our value proposition is to provide solutions for all the different passenger touch points across all the different technologies. So whether that's LED, E Ink, L C D, um, on grid, off grid, stop stations, vehicles. So um, we're able to use OnSign to cover all of those different points, all the different sizes and types of displays, even sort of non-traditional displays like this round full uh, matrix LED totem up there that's part of a project designed to sort of provide information at a long distance, a block or two away to a passenger, whether the bus is about to arrive or whether they've got time to get coffee or whether they need to run to catch the bus. So we have our all of our kiosks here, both the small ones and the large ones, uh, for product catalog and for demos are all running on on-site using on-site interactivity. Um, we have a couple of displays we're sort of launching here at the show that are designed for very specific applications. Um, we have this one, which is designed sort of for an urban streetscape environment. So we have a cut display, so two-thirds of a normal display, so we're a little narrower, keep the width down. We have a switch-based interactivity that lets us uh, page through information, uh, route information pairs with passes, along with the ADA enunciator for, uh, for people with accessibility issues. Um, we have uh, this uh, small kiosk associated also with a temperature scanner, so you can see um, that I can get my temperature, recognize my face, whether I'm wearing a mask or not. Um, so we've had a lot of interest from different agencies on this for their employees um, and for keep, helping keep everybody safe during COVID. Um, and with the integration with the kiosk, they're able to do surveys or provide additional information for employees right there at that point of contact. So we've had, a, uh, we've had our uh, model train layout here that has been a lot of the draw, having N-scale vehicles. So I think people end up working in public transit in part have to like trains and vehicles. I think it was a little, so it turns us all into little kids. Um, and also doing some uh, limited, we hope to do a little more, and we will at the next show, but actually doing some uh, RFID triggering, so trigger on-demand campaigns based on the arrival of the vehicles at specific places on the track. So we have, uh, this, is our, uh, this is our triangle kiosk, again, designed for a streetscape kind of environment where uh, you have very limited space, two foot by two foot footprint, so you can turn the blank side towards the wall, um, and you have, regardless of which way people are approaching on the sidewalk, they're able to see the information on it. Um, without having sort of the bulk of a traditional monolith kiosk uh, that either has to be turned towards the direction of travel, in which case it's an obstacle, or turned away, in which case nobody ever sees it because they're walking up against the side or they're having to stand right up against the curb to look at it. So this has been a very popular design um, for training. And you've got the interactivity button still. Absolutely. So switch-based interactivity. We also have a touchscreen version of this, and we make it in both LCD, LED, and then LCD, LCD. So the LCD, LCD can have one controller that drives both screens, mm -hmm. or two if you want to have touch. And, of course, the LCD, LED has to have two controllers because the difference in change. Difference in so this is designed, again, we're looking at, for transit, we're looking at wanting to be you know, a block away, way down the platform, just see the next bus coming in, how full it is, that kind of thing. The screen on the other side is there to provide the more detailed information, planning your trip, things like that, that an LCD can do much better than an LED. Um, so we have a couple other examples of seeing that on display. Wall-mounted or smaller single-sided seating display. Over in These all have full sensors for uh, temperature, uh, they're able to go from minus 30 degrees Celsius to minus to 60 degrees Celsius and still operate, um, along with steel construction and temper temper resistant glass, uh, all those kinds of things. So designed to work in a public environment. Um, and then over here you get into this is our on vehicle display. So we have several different sizes and shapes and directions of displays because no bus is the same. When we look at a different OEM factory bus, we're always looking for where is the display, place the display is going to go. 
you can always put a little tiny 16 by 9 display on an any bus, but to really take advantage of space, you need to be able to have the different sizes. So we have the 27 vertical, which is a great fit for the BYD buses, um, as well as some of the other buses where they want to have a little more room, but they can't do an overhead display. Um, we have a little 28 there, it goes on typically coaches and places where you really don't have very much room at the front. So you have to kind of put it above the windshield, our standard 24 for any, pretty much any bus. And then the 37 super wide is a great fit for the buses that have a little higher roof where you can put one of these at the very front instead of the little LED, or you can put one at the front and one further back for passengers. And then this 48 is a new display we're launching here at the show. The content's not quite right for it yet, but um, this is designed to go in the poster rail. So if you have a bus like a bus rapid transit, some of the 60 foot articulated buses, putting this sideways in the poster rail so that you can have that sort of traditional metro subway look route bar that goes all the way across. And then this is the other big kiosk we brought with us. Um, this has, again, there's a, there's a super wide display on this side. This is not touched. This would normally face inside the shelter. So its job is just to tell people how far away the bus is. And we have the, just a light box for the map. But if we, we have the emergency phone built into this, so um, this will call the police if there's a safety issue. And we can trigger content on the screens as well to help uh, with that message about maybe where the closest hospital is, where the closest police station is, that kind of information. Audio feedback too. Correct. So there's a speaker and a microphone. Okay. So when you push that button, it's going to call 911, the U.S. emergency number, and it's going to um, it's going to connect them because and they'll know where it is. But we also want to help attract attention because it may take a little bit for the police to get there. Mm -hmm. So if we can help attract attention from the public by providing information, that kind of thing, then we can hopefully speed up response. And then this side is a touchscreen kiosk. So this is a this is a capacitive touch sensor inside the glass. So we have six millimeter safety glass with a one inch gap. So we're able to protect the LCD, but I have full interactivity here. So this is actually from one of our other projects in Omaha. This is what they have on all their stops. So I could actually go into you know, tracking the bus I can go in and watch videos about how to ride, how to validate, that type of thing. And I can do my trip planning here. So once I figure out my route, it brings up a QR code, I scan it with my phone, transfer the route to my phone, I can walk away with the directions to get where I'm going. So um, this has been uh, a great show to basically show up a lot of the things we wouldn't normally be able to show in just a demo situation. You can't carry all this stuff in your car. Sure so, a lot of focus, a lot of yeah, so getting the opportunity to kind of demonstrate all that would be good. And then lastly, this is kind of our solar exhibit. So one of the things we're doing here is this is a reflective LCD. So this is a new technology. Um, it's an alternative to e-ink. It takes a little more power, but the benefit is you actually get a full animated LCD with the same ability to do anything that any other LCD display could do, video animation, those kinds of things. And yet, you have a very low solar cost. So, something like a shelter or a building, um, you can attach a panel to. Then you can kind of have that full value proposition of having a sol having a solar solution, but having a display that doesn't have the limitations of the e display. And we have this in a 10 inch size as well for smaller size. Well, right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for being such a great partner.